You know, some say ignorance is bliss. If you prefer that ignorant bliss, then now's the time to turn the TV off because you'll have no excuse left by the end of this to not take your rightful place as a warrior protecting and preparing the next generation. We're the Starbucks. We left the entertainment business because we knew that a silent war was being fought for the minds of America's children. And we knew that nothing would matter more than exposing it and stopping it. That's why we're here now, to expose the war on children. How long has this been going on? How did it happen? Who's responsible? How far down the rabbit hole does this all go? We know it's overwhelming, so let's start here. First, you need to understand that one of the most effective forms of normalizing the woke agenda is via something called the mere exposure effect. The mere exposure effect is a psychological phenomenon by which people tend to develop a preference for things or people that are more familiar to them than others. That means the more you show someone something, the more they start to like it or prefer it. This psychological mere exposure effect is the reason society is now flooded with imagery of what would have been considered fringe by most people only 10 years ago. I was a director in Hollywood for some of the biggest stars, so I speak from experience when I tell you that the mere exposure effect is how the media creates the reality we live in. Simply exposing the public to fringe concepts makes us normalize things that have never been considered normal before. This social engineering is how you make people see theories as facts, Facts as theories, opinions as violence, silence as safety, and men as fully able to become women with the snap of their fingers. With the power of the mere exposure effect, you can make almost anyone believe anything with enough pressure and exposure. This makes it one of the most dangerous weapons that kids face today. For instance, you might be wondering why some politicians propose seemingly ludicrous bills, like the one in Michigan threatening people with five years in prison for misgendering someone. It's not because they believe they can get away with it now. It's because they understand the process of normalizing prison over pronoun violations today so that it can become a reality in the future for the next generation. The mere exposure effect is why the concept of putting a screen in front of your child as a babysitter became normal. You saw people do it on TV when they were exhausted. You saw it in commercials. You saw it on social media. And then finally, it was normal. The mere exposure effect is also why Hollywood is flooding children's shows with woke agendas and sexual content, while most parents aren't looking because they have a trust bomb with the shows they watched as a kid. I'm Gonzarella. Calling me a she or a he doesn't feel right to me. Oh, I'm sorry I used the wrong name and pronouns. Hey, Blue! Trans members of this family all love each other so proudly and they all go marching in the big parade. Come join the fun! The mere exposure effect is why Scholastic is featuring books pushing transgender ideology on kids. It's why Bugs Bunny was naked at a pride parade. It's why kids are bombarded with pharmaceutical ads on nearly every TV station. It's why the White House is flying a trans flag at the center of their flag display. And it's why nearly every corporation and sports team on the planet feels the need to create a custom pride logo that they use every June. It's why the Washington Post ran a piece encouraging kids to see kink at pride parades. And the New York Times ran a film review lamenting that the new Little Mermaid didn't have enough kink for their liking. It's why Target is selling trans pride toddler onesies and tuck-it swimsuits, and it's why they did TV shows and magazine covers to normalize sex changes for kids, but never did a show or cover updating you that those kids no longer identify as the sex they pretended to be on those shows or covers. So why would corporations take part in this effort to destroy the fabric of reality as we know it? To find out, we sat down with Justin Danhoff. He's a Wall Street expert who's made it his mission to answer this question. So how did wokeness take over corporate America? It was a tripart takeover. It was bottom up, it was top down, and it was outside in. Top down, if you look at the banking industry, if you look at the past political affiliations of the board members, it's over 80% leaning to the left as opposed to the right. So there's no longer a balance at the top. What do I mean when I say bottom up? 
the same thing that's happening on college campus, we're now seeing on the corporate campuses, where conservatives, they keep their mouth shut. The woke employees, they feel very empowered because they now know the C-suite and the board agree with their woke positions. And then there's the outside in. When you talk about companies like BlackRock, State Street, and Vanguard, you know, they're probably your largest shareholder and they're demanding you take certain actions. What is ESG and how is it used to push woke ideology? It is social change by changing business behavior, by changing culture. So I, for example, went to the shareholder meetings of Amazon, Facebook, and Google. At all three of those meetings, they announced that they were adopting affirmative action policies for their board in reaction to shareholder proposals. Jesse Jackson was at two of those three meetings applauding. Why are shareholder proposals important? That's one reason. But they also moved the cultural needle. Fast forward three years. That's when Goldman Sachs announced that they were no longer going to finance any company's IPO unless they had at least two diverse board seats in the terms of affirmative action. That's when NASDAQ put a rule in place where they said they are going to delist you from the exchange if you don't have two diverse board spots, one for a woman, one for an underrepresented minority. Why is it that our kids today are faced with pride flags everywhere they go, no matter what, at every company? Now to keep your perfect score on the Corporate Equality Index, you have to have three events each year that promote the LGBTQ plus community. So, you know, you've got your Super Bowl ads that have gotten crazy. There's one. You get your, you know, flag up on all of your, you know, social media and your website during Pride Month. You better find a third really quick before the year runs out or you're going to lose your perfect score. What happens if a company steps out of line and they don't do those three things? They are tarred and feathered and shamed. As a consumer, as a mom, it feels like corporate America has given us all a giant middle finger. Are they banking on us going back to those same buying behaviors after these Balenciaga and Target boycotts are over? Yeah, they, they frankly are. Talking with Justin got us thinking. How well do we know where our money is going when we shop at Target or get our insurance from State Farm? We looked and found that Target has given over $2 million to GLSEN, an organization that promotes schools secretly transitioning children and undermining parents, while State Farm went the extra mile after their donation to GLSEN by partnering with an organization called Gender Cool. The program that they supported gave LGBTQ plus books to kids as young as five years old to introduce concepts about gender identity and transitioning to them. These companies aren't alone though. A quick look at GLSEN's website displayed sponsorships from Hollister, Disney, PetSmart, Gucci, YouTube, New Balance, Hulu, Amazon, Calvin Klein, Nickelodeon, Walmart, and many more. GLSEN also supports pornographic books in schools and opposes the removal of them. GLSEN is only one of the nonprofits using funds donated by corporate America to fundamentally change the reality we live in. These are other groups that many corporations are giving money to without your knowledge. Even Walmart has funded drag shows and gender ideology for kids. Every once in a while, powerful people pull back the curtain to expose the plan. This video is one of those times. In Davos a couple of years ago, Vice President Biden met privately with those of us working behind the scenes. And he sat down with us and looked us in the eye and he said, you companies can do what we government cannot and will never do. You have to change the world on this issue. We are committed to change the world for LGBTI inclusion around the world. How many companies have signed on to that now? 270. Our goal is to get many, many more and, um, and then to work around the world. We're bigger than most, a lot of countries. So tremendous power. After talking to Justin, we still had questions. So we sat down with a former top executive at one of the largest ad agencies in the world, Deutsch. So I was Chief Creative Officer at, at Deutsch. Um, I was there for eight years, and before that, I was 12 years at TBWA Shia which is the other probably biggest agency on the West Coast. What does diversity, equity, inclusion look like at a major ad agency? Diversity is conformity. Uh, equity is unfairness. Uh, and inclusion means exclusion. Every ad is about advancing wokeness of some kind. We used to sit around and say, what does our agency stand for? What does this brand stand for? We're not asking that question anymore. We stand for diversity, equity, and inclusion. 
which is wokeism, just packaged up for corporations. Are they intentionally sexualizing our children and stealing their innocence? I think they're trying to introduce the radical gender theory, radical gender ideology to your child. They're using commercials and merchandise and what they're selling to get your kid to believe that. That is how advertising works. Over time, it's building equity, brand equity in your mind. Fortune 500 companies and Fortune 100 companies have decided that they're going to indoctrinate your children with radical gender ideology and that's 100% what they're going to do and they don't even question it and you should just expect that. It just seems like there's no moral, you know, construct at all no. or end to this. No, no boundaries mm -hmm. to message sexuality to kids, to the gender ideology. Um, if we don't speak up, it's over real fast from here. I don't, I don't think it's going to take long now. So as long as they can protect their own kids from this insanity, they're perfectly okay with pushing it on unsuspecting children whose parents maybe aren't present. I think that's right. I think they feel at this point the incentives are greater to do that. What do you think people, parents out there should do to prevent this from hurting their kids? Basically the thing I would tell parents is there's an all out assault for, the, for your, the brains of your children and it's coming through every form of media you can imagine and if you don't know that, you're naive and it's going to transform your child's mind and it won't take long you know, unless you guard their mind. So what can you take away from this? Look at the examples set this year by conservative boycotts of Bud Light and Target. Those companies have lost over 40 billion since the start of those boycotts. Use your money as a weapon to fight back in the war on children. Go the extra mile to buy from companies or small businesses who aren't pushing woke agendas. This is key to reclaiming America and it's a far smaller price to pay than our ancestors had to pay. Know what your kids are doing online and protect them from the harmful content before they see it. Talk to your kids about how advertisers and major corporations are using the mere exposure effect to change their values and beliefs. There's power in knowing, and often you'll see that they resent being manipulated like this by powerful entities. Knowledge is power, and a generation that seeks truth is a generation that can save America. Every parent needs to realize that what you've seen so far is only one part of the mere exposure effect that's been driving what can only be described as a far left cultural revolution that's meant to destroy our country. But that's only part of the story. For the revolution to be successful, kids are the attack point. If this is a war on children, then what are the weapons being used? One of the most destructive weapons is social media. It's a weapon that communist dictators like Mao or Fidel Castro would have blushed over. With it, these powerful forces have the ability to censor what they don't want you to know and amplify what they want you to believe while normalizing that social media alone will have the power to transform a generation. 